Hi, these are the top 10 films in 1963. When I say top 10, I mean my personal favourite films in 1963. It's coronavirus season and things are getting worse or better. I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with the list. In at number 10, The Birds. Alfred Hitchcock takes a B-movie premise and makes a really good horror film about a bunch of birds that go crazy and attack people. The film stars Tippi Hendren, who had a terrible time with her director and with all these birds. Years later, she'd have a terrible time with her husband, who would direct her in the film Raw, where she had a terrible time with lions and tigers and elephants, oh my. The film also stars a young Veronica Cartwright, an unsung scream queen hero who later appeared in Alien, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and The Witches of Eastwick. In a number nine, Lord of the Flies. This is a great adaptation of William Golding's novel about a bunch of school children who are marooned on an island where eventually these posh boys descend into savagery and murder. Some of the conversations on that island are so boring that I reckon I would have descended to savagery and murder a lot sooner. And, and they thought they'd leave the can from Cambridge Town and they and Burr is a river and there are a lot of rivers around there. Camber, and then Lee, because a lot of the towns near there ended with Lee. Their names then with, ended with Lee, so, so they called it Camberley, Camberley. And that's the true story of Camberley. Fittingly at number eight, eight and a half. Fellini's beautiful and surreal film about a director suffering from director's block. It's absolutely stunning to look at and has an amazing cast. Marcello Mastroianni gives a wonderful performance as the lost director. In 1963 he also appeared in Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow, where he gives three completely distinct comedic performances. He's a brilliantly versatile actor and he plays the anxiety and the disinterest of this director perfectly. And Claudia Cardinale appears as the director's ideal woman. 1963 was an amazing year for Cardinale. She appeared in this, a film that's later on in the list as well, and also The Pink Panther. Gentlemen. In at number seven, Tom Jones. No, not him. This adaptation of the 1879 novel Tom Jones, A Foundling, won Best Picture at the Oscars, and it has to be one of the strangest Best Picture winners. It's a chaotic comedy that uses loads of unusual techniques. It starts as if it's a silent film with text appearing on screen, characters repeatedly break the fourth wall, and it features a speeded up chase sequence a la Benny Hill. It's such a fun film, and Albert Finney is so entertaining as the title character. It was also very far ahead of its time, featuring very early ASMR. My favourite performance in the film is by Hugh Griffith, who plays Tom Jones's love interest's father. It's a larger-than-life performance. And it's terrible to say, but my favourite part of the film is when he legitimately loses control of a horse he's riding. Even the best of horsemen should avoid the battle. In a number six, The Big City. Sanjit Ray's beautiful film about a woman living in Calcutta who decides that she needs to get a job in order to support her struggling family. It deals with a changing world, where the idea of the male head of the family who needs to be the breadwinner was no longer quite as important, and where the idea of an independent woman was not something to be frightened or ashamed of. It's a truly beautiful picture about a couple learning to see each other differently, and it's, it's, it's incredibly touching. In a number five, The Great Escape. Never has a three-hour film flown by so fast. 
This World War II prison escape drama is absolutely riveting. It's a war film for the whole family, really, and features an all-star cast. Steve McQueen, James Garner, Richard Attenborough, Charles Bronson, and Donald Pleasance, who gives my favourite performance as a forger who begins to lose his eyesight. My least favourite performance is probably James Coburn, who gives a very strange Australian accent. I love you, what bloody good is that? Not the worst Australian accent on film, that honour goes to Quentin Tarantino in Django Unchained. <laughs> the film isn't historically accurate, and it's making it much more easy for an American audience throwing in a couple of dashing American heroes who really sort of take charge when this was an escape of British Commonwealth prisoners. The motorbike chase also didn't happen, but I don't care, because it's really fun. The film has a very light-hearted tone, but it doesn't shy away from some of the horrors that happened, and it's, it's, it's one of the great Hollywood World War II pictures. The person I feel most sorry for, though, is the person who has to share the cell next to Steve McQueen. The sound of that fucking baseball. In a number four, From Russia With Love. Some people may wonder why a James Bond film is so high up in the list, but I think if this wasn't a James Bond film, this would be considered one of the great Cold War thrillers. This second 007 film may be the best. Istanbul makes a wonderful location for the story of Spectre's revenge on Bond for his actions in Doctor No. The fight on the Orient Express is one of the great fist fights in film, and Robert Shaw is totally believable as the deadly Red Grant, who slips up by ordering red wine with fish. White can't you, monsieur? Uh, no, the red kind. It's a brilliant Cold War thriller, a fantastic action film, and one of, if not the, best James Bond films. In a number three, The Servant. This psychological drama deals with class in a fascinating and twisted fashion. A posh snob, played brilliantly by James Fox, hires a man-servant, played equally well by Dirk Bogard. A role reversal is inevitable, but it's done with such precision and such class Fox is wonderful at playing the weak, wealthy Londoner, and Bogard is fabulous as the manipulative working-class servant. It's an excellent film, with two outstanding central performances. Take it yourself! Oh! Oh, what's the matter? I'm going. I couldn't have heard. Oh, get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here in a place where they just chuck balls in your face! In a number two, High and Low. This is one of Kurosawa's best films, and that's really saying something. Toshiro Mifune plays an executive of a woman's shoe company who is called by kidnappers who say they have his son. However, it turns out they have the wrong boy, having accidentally kidnapped his driver's son. But they still demand money, or they'll kill him. It's a wonderfully horrid, complicated situation. Mifune is of course marvellous, as he always is, as the conflicted businessman. Much like Kurosawa's earlier work, Stray Dog, he goes into great detail of the police procedures, and it's absolutely captivating. It's an excellent picture, and terribly after its release, there was an increase in kidnappings in Japan, with Kurosawa himself receiving threats about his own daughter, Kazuko Kurosawa, being a target. Kazuko has gone on to be a costume designer and has worked on some excellent films, including 2018's marvellous Shoplifters. And in at number one, The Leopard, Visconti's breathtaking epic about an ageing prince in a changing Italy is beautiful beyond belief. Every shot is a painting and something to behold. Burt Lancaster plays the prince with astonishing dignity. Alain Delon is brilliantly charming and simultaneously unlikable as the nephew who doesn't stand for anything and will move with the times, looking out only for himself. Claudia Cardinale is remarkable once again as the beautiful daughter of a corrupt lower caste businessman. Visconti has complete control of this picture, it's absolutely magisterial, and you can see its influence in later films such as The Godfather, where this wise elder statesman is watching the world around him change, but is immovable himself. It completely sweeps you away, and it's magically tragic if there is such a thing. It's a true thing of beauty. So, counting down the top ten. 
In at number 10, The Birds. In at number 9, Lord of the Flies. In at number 8, Eight and a Half. In at number 7, Tom Jones. In at number 6, The Big City. In at number 5, The Great Escape. In at number 4, From Russia with Love. In at number 3, The Servant. In at number 2, High and Low. And in at number 1, The Leopard. Well, that was my top 10 films of 1963. What are your top 10 films of 1963? Cheers.